welcome back to Beyond the Pew. In this final talk on relationships, we're going to dive into sibling relationships and talk about how to make sure that our homes are places of love. Uh, I know a lot of times people will talk about that our families are supposed to be schools of love or our homes are supposed to be the domestic church. I don't know about you, but there were many times during my childhood where my home looked more like a boxing ring or like a circus than it did a church. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. In those times of conflict and in those times of brokenness, what are ways that we as parents can help our children navigate uh, these stormy situations? So I've got a couple of tips and pointers and action for you. Um, the first is to choose to facilitate the problem rather than to fix the problem. I know the easy solution in times of fighting is to just tell your children, stop picking at each other, leave one another alone, separate yourselves from one another. You go to your room and you go over here and then we're good. Um, I understand that sometimes that's the first step and that's needed because if things are very heated, they do need to separate and not be with each other for a little while while they cool down. But I think if we just stop there, we're missing out on a beautiful opportunity to teach our children about the importance of relationships that they're worth fighting for. And we're also missing out on an opportunity to lead our children through an experience of reconciliation, that we can actually take this brokenness and bring healing into it and help make their relationship stronger. And that's what I mean by facilitate. So as they separate, take time to talk to each of your children and hear them out, get their perspective on what's going on. Hey, you seem to be really mad at your brother. Can you tell me what happened? Um, or, hey, I saw you hit your sister. Can you tell me why you thought that was a good idea? Um, helping them process their behavior, helping them process their emotions, and helping get the facts straight. Uh, then after you do that, you can bring your children back together and help them talk about it uh, with one another. Um, and again, I want to encourage, facilitate. Don't do the talking for them. Uh, help encourage them to say themselves what it is they're feeling what it is they perceive happened. Um, and now that you've hold, now that you've heard the whole story, you can help them fill in the gaps um, and help them really get out everything that they're going through or everything that they're experiencing. Uh, that is so much better than just fixing the problem. Um, that's usually an easy fix. Um, and I know that things are busy and hectic and crazy. I get it. Um, but when we choose to help them facilitate the conflict, we're showing them um, how love is called to be patient and that relationships are worth fighting for. Um, with that facilitating the problem and the conflict, I think it's really important that we help our children recognize that there's a difference of experiences. And that's the second thing that I wanna talk about. I know for me, when I was little, I assumed that everyone experienced the world the same way that I did. Um, and if they didn't, they were just weird and kind of an anomaly. Um, but that everybody had a good day like I did and that everybody knew I had a really good day and that the reverse was also true. If I had a terrible day, that everybody knew I had a terrible day and they should be respectful of that. Um, but so often... That's not what's going on, that other people don't experience things the same way that we do. We need to help our children realize that difference. Um, so if your son comes home and he's had a terrible day and he's out in the backyard kicking the soccer ball around because he just wants to be alone and his sister comes outside and she's had an awesome day and really missed her brother and doesn't know that her brother's in a really bad mood and she becomes annoying and pestering. And it's really coming from a place of she just wants to spend time with her brother um, and he's just annoyed beyond all reason. And then a fight erupts um, to help them talk to one another about how they were coming from different places. Um, once you hear what their day was like, once you hear both sides of the story, you can say, son, would you tell your sister about the day you had? And son, do you realize that she really just wanted to spend time with you? Now, that doesn't excuse any of the behavior that happened, but then can we see that there's more to this situation than just what you guys said to each other? Um, I think that's a beautiful way that we can teach our children how to be merciful. We're able to help them see that 
other people are going through hard times or other people might be suffering and we're not aware of it. But if we can get behind their eyes and see where they're coming from, we can be much more loving towards them. So we can help see our kids, help our kids see that there's a difference in experience going on. The last thing um, I want to talk about is kind of like the gold star of this facilitating conflict, and that's bringing God into the fight that's going on or bringing God into the brokenness that's happening. Um, Wouldn't it be beautiful if when you bring your children back together to talk or even when you go talk to them about what's going on, if you were able to tell them, hey, while you were cooling off and you and your brother were in your separate spaces, I was praying for both of you because I know that you really do love each other. Um, But right now we're all a little heated. So I've been praying and asking that God would come be with us in the middle of this. And I've been praying for your relationship as siblings. And when we're all back together talking, I want us to all pray together too, because I know that underneath everything, you really do care about each other. Um, So we can pray with our children. We can pray for our children in the midst of these times of conflict. Um, Another thing that I think would be beautiful um, as a way for us to bring God into these situations is to bring scripture into it. Um, I love the Psalms. They're very emotional, very dramatic. King David really expressed the highs and the lows. Um, Sometimes he's complaining about dying in a pit, and then other times he's gazing upon God in the sanctuary. So he's got the full human experience in these Psalms. What if we ask our children, hey, I know you're upset right now. Can you find something in the Psalms that talks about how you feel right now? I found one for an example. I think it's kind of funny. Um, Psalm 36 verse 3 says, The words of his mouth are mischief and deceit. He has ceased to act wisely and do good. That's very pointed um, and might be a good thing for your children to say to one another. Like, you lied about this and you made a bad decision and it's affecting me in this way. Um, And it's also a beautiful testament to the fact that this is not the first time God has been in the midst of a conflict, that he has heard similar things in the past and that these people made it through. And so will we in the midst of this struggle that's going on. And then to counter that at the end of the conversation, have them find a psalm that has a prayer of hope or a prayer of blessing for their sibling in the midst of this struggle as we're seeking reconciliation. Um, Psalm 19 is really beautiful and has a number of verses that could be good for that. One of my favorite ones to pray with is verse 12, where it says, clear me of hidden faults. Wouldn't it be beautiful if at the end of this conflict and as you're bringing your children back together and reconciling them, you can say, hey, let's all pray that God would clear us of hidden faults, that he would make us aware of the ways that our behavior is affecting one another so that we would be more loving. And then the last verse in this psalm is, Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Again, what a beautiful prayer to pray together um, as we're moving past struggles and helping our young children choose love. Um, I hope this is helpful, and I hope you're able to navigate Um, struggles and difficulties with a little bit more ease. Please know that we here at Ablaze are praying for you and for your families that you would all truly be schools of love. God bless.